So how do you pause your game in Unity? Well, there's three functions that are part of Unity's time class that we're going to be paying attention to. The first of which is time.time, .time, which is the time since the beginning of the game in seconds. The other is time.delta time, and you might be already familiar with this one since usually you'd multiply this by your speed or velocity that you're moving your player at so that it remains consistent among all the frames. And time.delta time basically just means the time in seconds since the current and last frame, so the seconds since the last frame. And lastly, we have time.time scale, and this is the scale at which time passes, so this is a value from 0 to 1 and it is a float, so if it's at 1, then everything is real time. However, if it's at 0, then that means that nothing is moving, and physics also uses the time dot delta time in order to move consistently. So then we're going to be using the time dot time scale function in order to set it to zero. And that means that anything that will be using time dot delta time or anything that relies on physics, such as the fixed update function, will be basically paused, which is what we're going for. So let's start off by writing a small script to do this. So here we have a game that I made for the beginner series I posted. If you're interested and want to check that out, I'll put it in the description. But I already have a scripts folder here under the assets, so I'm just going to right click and create a new C sharp script and I'm gonna call it the pause manager. So then let's just double click that. And so I'm just gonna erase all the functions inside of the class. And the first thing we wanna do is make a function for pausing the game. So I'm gonna say public void pause game. And in this function, we are going to set the time dot time scale equal to zero to basically pause the game. And then I'm also gonna make another function called public void resume game. And here we'll set the time dot time scale back to one. So that if we want to pause the game, we just call this function. And if we want to resume the game, we just call this function. So if you don't have the input system installed already, go to window package manager, and you can just type in input at the top. And then here is the new input system down here. You can just click install and it will ask you to restart your editor. So just click yes when that comes up and it will restart and apply the changes. So I'm going to make a quick input so that if we press escape, then it will pause the game. So in our scripts folder, we can right click create input actions. And I'm going to call this the pause action. And I'm going to double click that. And then here, I'm just going to add a quick action map. And I'm going to call this the pause action map. If you're not familiar with the input system, I have several videos on it that I'll also link down below in the description. For our action, we're just going to say pause game. So this is how we will identify our input and we will have an action type of a button. In the note binding, I'm going to press the path and then write escape. And so now our escape key is bound to this pause game action. And then let's just save the asset and exit out. And then we can select the action itself and we can generate a C sharp script and we can click apply. And this will just generate the C sharp script that we can access from in our function. If you open it up, we now have a pause action .cs class with our action map and our action in our pause manager. We can actually reference that so we can say pause action action. And then in the awake function, we are going to initialize this action. So we're going to say action equals new pause action. We also need an on enable function. So on enable, we enable the input. So action dot enable. And then we also need an on disable function. This is called when the script is enabled and we will also enable the input. And this is called when the script is disabled. So we say action dot disable. And now that we enabled the input action, we actually want to have a function that's called every time that the escape key is pressed. So we can bound that function inside of the start function. So we can say private void start in our start function. We can say action dot pause. So this is our action map dot pause game so this is our action and this is an event so we can bound this to a function we want to call whenever this event is triggered so we can say dot perform so whenever our escape key is pressed then plus equals we can just put an underscore because we don't want to pass in any parameters to our function and this is the syntax for events and then equals and the greater than sign so here we can actually make another function 
determine pause. Down here we can say private void determine pause. You can probably name it better. And then here we can say if paused, if it's already paused, then we want to resume the game. Else we want to actually pause the game. So whenever we click escape, depending if it's paused or not, then it will call the appropriate functions and either pause it or resume it. So let's try this out. So let's minimize this and then let's attach the script to an empty game object. So in our hierarchy, we can right click, create empty, and I'm just gonna call this pause system. So you can press F2 to change the name of a game object. And then on the right, we can say add component. And then I'm going to add in the pause manager. So then we can click play. And if we move around and press pause, then it pauses. Everything pauses because everything here is dependent on time dot delta time. And then if we click escape again, it will resume back from where we were. But as you may have noticed, the audio still keeps playing even though we're paused. So we can actually change that very quickly. So whenever we pause our game, we can actually also pause the audio listener for Unity. So in our Unity scene, there's only one audio listener and it's listening to all the audios and it basically plays them back through your speakers. So we can actually say audio listener dot pause equals true. So we are pausing the audio listener and we can do that down here as well. I'm gonna actually put this before the paused equals true. And here we can say in the resume game function, we can say audio listener dot pause equals false. So this will pause the actual audio for our game. But there's still one thing that's not correct. So if we click pause while we're jumping, you can see our sprite still changes direction when we press the WASD keys. And this is because our sprite direction function is not dependent on time.delta time or on physics. So we can actually go to our pause manager script and we can make our paused boolean static so that it can be accessed by any class and that we can make sure it's not instantiated more than once. And we can go to our player controller script and in our update function we can say if pause manager dot paused. So if it's paused then we're just going to return return will basically exit out of this function for that call. Click play, and now we jump and press escape. Whatever we press, it does not change the direction. And when we press escape again, it continues as normal. So what if you want to have a little menu pop up to, you know, display that you're paused, which is what most games do. Well, then we can just add a UI component to our scene. So we can right click on the hierarchy and we can say, add in a UI. And then we can add in a button. So let's add in a button. Two new objects were added to our scene are canvas, which basically has uh, the collection of all of our UI objects, the event system, which basically keeps track of all the UI and tells you when their state has changed. So this is useful for if you have the button and you click the button, then it will tell you that you click the button and then you can do something with that information. So you can see when we press our event system, since we're using the new event system, we have to click this button and it will replace the event system with the new one so it can be compatible with your input system. So let's click on our canvas and this is our canvas. As you can see, we're in screen space overlay, which basically overlays this on top of our camera. So then we can click our button and we can click this little drop down button to see the text and we can just say resume. So this will resume the game. Um, you can also customize the color a bit, you know, whatever you want. Let's put it red and click on the button itself and you can change the color of the button. This doesn't really match the theme of the game, but. And then the button you can actually change where you want it to be anchored to. So this is if the game changes resolutions, for example, people have different screen sizes or maybe your game supports multiple sizes, then this kind of anchors the UI to one location depending on where it's located. So you can put this one if it's at the top left, but right now I'm just gonna keep it at the center so it stays anchored at the center. And I'm just gonna drag the, the button to the middle. So this is the center of our UI. And then we can also click the canvas and add in a UI text. There's two types of text. There's the Text Mesh Pro. For that one, you'd have to import the Text Mesh Pro Essentials. So with Text Mesh Pro, you can do a lot more stuff like underlining, and special effects for your text. All right, cool, so now that we have our text, we can just drag it to the top, and in our text options, we can center it in the middle with our alignment, and we can also center it in the middle 
of the box with this button right here. And then we can just say menu in the text. So this is an indication of our menu. We can just drag it wherever we want. And you can also increase the font size depending on how big or small you want it. Um, I really like Text Mesh Pro because you see the difference here. They calculate the resolution for you and change the text depending on its size and the resolution. And it's clear and crisp. But if you look at the Unity text, it's all blurry. And I just suggest using the Text Mesh Pro since Unity text can be kind of a hassle to deal with because it's blurry a lot of the times. But I'm just gonna keep it like that for this video to simplify it. And then in our canvas, we can add a panel. So we can right click, add a UI, and we can add in a panel. Panel is overlaid on top of our UI. And if we put our game screen to the side, we can see that there's now a panel overlaid. You can also change the order of the panel so it can be at the top of the canvas. So we can just drag and drop it to the top and then the button will be shown on top of the panel so that it doesn't occlude the button. And then in our panel, we can just change the color and make it darker. I'm also just going to drag in the menu closer to the button itself. We have our menu here. We can also, for organization's sake, create a empty game object and then select the panel to the text by pressing shift and selecting the game objects and putting them under the empty game object. And we can just F2 and name that menu. You can click the menu and you can see that we can set the game object active. So this is what we're going to be using to set the menu active. And once it's not active, even if you click this screen at that position, it won't register because the button isn't active. So if we go back to our script up here, we can set a variable called public game object and menu. So here we're going to have a game object with our menu. Then down here in our pause game, we can say when we pause the game, then we're going to say menu.setActive equals to true. In our pause manager script, in our resume game, we want to make sure that we say menu.setActive to false. Because if we press the escape key, we want to make sure that our menu is set active equals to false. Call this function when we press the button in our UI. So let's minimize that. And then we can click our button. And if we scroll down, our button has an on click event. So we can add in a new function whenever we click. So the first thing we want to do is drag in our pause system into our object. And then here we can then call in our pause manager function. So we can click the function, go to pause manager, and then we can say resume game. And then before we click play, we want to click our pause system and then drag in the menu game object. And then we can click play, we can press escape and you can see our menu pops up. When we press resume, then it will resume our game and the menu will disappear. There's also something else that I wanna mention. You see that when we pause our game, our time.time scale is zero and that pauses anything that's delta time related. But what if you still want something to be time related? So for example, what if you have some animation that you still want to be running in the menu or you have some coroutine that you want to keep running? Well, there's actually a couple of variables for that. So let's make an example coroutine. So I enumerator test. So here we can say yield return new wait for seconds and then you wait for three seconds, for example. And this is will not be called because this is reliant on time. But luckily they have another function instead. You can say wait for seconds real time. So this is using unscaled time. And unscaled time will keep on running even if the time scale is paused. So you can use unscaled time to do other stuff in your script while the game is paused. For example, instead of doing time.delta time, you would say time dot unscaled delta time. And you can see we also have unscaled time, fixed unscaled delta time and fixed unscaled time. And you usually use the fixed for physics based movement. Another thing that you can do is if you have an animation, for example, if on our button we have an animation so we can click our button, we can add a component and we can add in an animation. And then I'm going to set our menu active just to see the button. We can press window animation animation and I'm just going to put this tab to the right. We can select our game object and we can create a new animation. And I'm just going to save this under my animation folder and call this button anim. And so then we can add a property. And in this case, I'm just going to change the scale of the button. And then for it to record your changes, you have to make sure to be pressing this recording mode. 
So I'm going to go to 30 seconds and I'm going to change the scale to 0.5 and 0.5. And then if you click play, it's this wobbly button animation. So to add that to your button, you just go back to button and then in our hierarchy, we can click on a new animation clip with this button to the right and we can add in our button animation. So I'm just going to click on the menu and disable it once again. And if we jump and click escape, you'll see that our button is not being animated. The animation relies on the scaled time. And to fix that, we can't do that with the animation directly. We have to add in a animator controller and then we have to make an actual animator controller. So I'm going to go to my animations folder, right click create, and I'm going to create an animator controller. And I'm just going to call this button controller. We can double click that animator and then drag in our button animation. So this is our default animation that will always be playing because we don't have any other animation. And to make sure that it loops, we can just press our button animation and click the wrap mode to loop so that it loops over and over again. Then back in our button, we can remove this animation component since we don't need that. And then we can just add in our controller so we can add in our button controller with this little button at the right. And then here in the update mode, we're at normal, but if you click it and you go down, you can see there's an unscaled time, which this runs even when the time.time scale is zero. So it's having an issue where the button was not animating, even though it should have been animating. And it's because if you take a look at the animator and you press the animation, even though I dragged and dropped the animation in the motion, it said there was no animation. And that's because Unity does not accept legacy animations, which is what this animation was. And we can fix that easily by clicking the top three buttons down here and clicking debug. And then you can go to your animation. So you can click on your button animation and all the debug parameters are there. And make sure you uncheck legacy. So this was checked. So you uncheck this one here. And then in back into our animator, you can drag and drop the motion. So you can select the motion and select the button animation. And now it will work. So I'm just going to set the menu to false. I'm going to remove this debug for now since it's making things a little confusing. All right. So now if we click play, then if we pause, then this keeps animating. And if we press escape, then the menu disappears and our game continues as usual. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you don't already know, I recently opened up a Patreon and I offer the source code for my tutorials there, as well as early access to videos and access to an exclusive chat channel on my Discord. I want to thank two new patrons on the dedicated tier, Walter Haynes, and I also want to thank ZDM. Thank you so much for the support, I really appreciate it. And I also want to thank another patron on the supporter tier. So if you haven't already joined my Discord, I'll put the link on the description. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them there. And see you next video.